In the second part of this tutorial, we're going to look at the simulations tool panel. And the way we access that, if we don't already have it open, is just click and hold, come down to simulation tools. If you're already in this toolbar, you can simply choose the tab that's right here, simulation tools. And what the simulation tools are going to do for us is it's going to give us a way to control the simulation and access utilities um, like the MassFX Explorer and things like that. And we've already looked at some of these tools already when we did our simulation in part one. We have here the same buttons that we see on our main toolbar on the right hand side where we can start our simulation. And remember we talked about the fact that this actually doesn't create keyframes yet. We can reset our simulation here so everything goes back to the initial state, including our scroller. The start simulation without animation is going to allow gravity and things like that to happen, but it's not going to play animations that we created on our own. And we can step through our simulations. So when we choose this, we can actually step through frame by frame to see what's going to happen. Now, down here in the simulation baking, this is where we're actually going to create keyframes using the animations that we've made. So if we choose bake all, it's going to run through our simulation and if you notice down here, there was a green bar really quickly, and it actually created this simulation. So if we click on the ball, we can see all of the keyframes that are here at the bottom that it's created. And now if we hit play, we have our animation. If we want to edit this, we can come over here and click the unbake all and that will take all of the keyframes away and we can reset everything back to start and make our changes whatever we need to do and rebake it we can choose an one particular object and choose bake selected where it will only add the keyframes to the things that we have selected and not the other things in the scene and we can also unbake selected. So if we have an entire scene that's baked and we want to change one object, we can simply choose that object, select the object, and select unbake selected, and we can modify that. All right, in order to show you capture transform, we're going to create a new scene here really quickly. And um, this is a scene that we use probably quite regularly with the Mass Effects tutorial. What it's going to be is just a simple brick wall. And the way we're going to do this is just to use boxes. And we're going to make a couple of copies of these boxes. And all I'm doing to do this is just simply selecting, hitting shift on the keyboard while I move it over. And when I do this, it creates a copy of those, and then I can tell it how many instances I want to make of this. So you can see how the brick wall is, is making itself quite quickly. And again, I'm going to raise it up. by hitting shift on the keyboard and I'm going to move it over so that it looks like a brick wall Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to apply, just like we did with our 
sphere, we're going to apply a dynamic rigid body to each of these bricks. Now when we hit simulation, what's going to happen is you're going to, there's probably going to be kind of a little explosion effect here going on, and they fall over. Now, for this particular scene, we're going to reset this. I'm going to copy some of these bricks so that we have something to bounce against. Now we have a couple of layers here, and we're going to create, uh, excuse me, we're going to apply a dynamic rigid body to all of these bricks, and we're going to simulate it. Now we kind of have a pile of bricks here, and that's what we wanted. So if we were to reset this state, you can see they're still kind of moving around a little bit, getting settled. If we were to reset the simulation, it takes all of that away. But let's say that we need a scene that has a brick wall that's already fallen down. We just want to create the wall that's been, been destroyed somehow, and we don't want to actually see the wall being destroyed. So what we can do is we, we can turn off our simulation, we can select all of our bricks, click on Capture Transform, and now when we reset our state, you can see that our bricks are not actually jumping back up into a built wall. They're staying where they're at. So this allows us to have this massive amount of bricks place themselves and look quite random as they did that without actually having to place a bunch of bricks and move them and rotate them and get them looking correct. All right, under simulation settings, we're going to look at that by undoing what we just did. And we're going to start our simulation again. We're going to watch our bricks fall. And as that happens, this bar is going to reach 100, and it's going to stop. But if you look up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that our bricks are actually still moving. The reason for that is by default under simulation settings, it has selected continue simulation, which means that it's going to continue to create our simulation. Uh, if you remember when we had the ball in tutorial one and it reached 100, the ball kept rolling off the scene. So we can change that by on the last frame, clicking Stop Simulation. So once it reaches 100, reset the simulation. Once this slide bar reaches 100, everything will stop moving. And you can see that no bricks are moving now. And then the last option that it gives us is Loop the Animation. So we'll reset our simulation. We'll start it again, and when our slider reaches 100, we see that it jumps back to the zero frame and recreates our animation. And this uh, is a neat tool so that you can watch animations over and over again to make sure that you have done them properly. And the last options we have down here, the first one is uh, Explore Scene. The first one is Explore Scene. So when we click on that, we can see all of our objects in the scene. And we can change their settings, um, set them to dynamic. We can validate the scene. And what this does is it makes sure that the elements don't violate some simulation requirements, and we can choose those by the checkboxes here and click on Validate. 
and then we have export scene where we can export the scene to be used by other programs.